Brussels has been a hub of activity with Western Balkan leaders, heads of state and government coming frequently, one of whom is the president of North Macedonia, Stevo Penderovsky, and he joins me on the Global Conversation. Thanks so much for being with us, President. My pleasure. So after your meeting, specifically with the EU foreign policy chief, you said that the stagnation of European integration sends harmful messages to the Western Balkans and negatively affects stability in the region. What happens if the accession process doesn't get moving in countries like yours? It already means then a, ra a raising of the populism, of the nationalism, uh, going backward, speaking about in economic terms, even creating an atmosphere in which it is possible to speak about, to produce the non-papers in which it's possible to say something about the changing of the borders. Hearing this anachronic idea in the 21st century, in the year 2021, to speak about the changing of the borders after 30 years of a heavy investment on the part of the Europeans in the Western Balkan region, and of course, all the economic and other hardships our people have been through. So that is the end result of this policy of enlargement. The non-paper has been circulated suggesting border changes mm -hmm. in the Western Balkans. What do you know about it? Nothing more than uh, the high officials of the European Union know about that, or at least they told me they know nothing about that. And uh, when I said why they are not more vocal in this regard, because they should condemn these ideas, regardless of who is the creator and who is the messenger of these ideas. The foreign policy chief Borrell was, was quite active in this regard and was vocal in a clear statement uh, condemning these ideas. And, but I ask all of them from times to times, or from all levels of the European Union, to speak against that ideas because they are very dangerous, especially in the region, which has been quite recently out of that bloody series of the li latest Balkan Wars. In the 1990s, we have more than 100,000 people being killed in the whole region, millions being resettled, uh, huge damage to their homes. So uh, the, the best and brightest has left indefinitely the region and their, their homelands. And now, if anybody is trying to recreate the atmosphere in which we can speak about the changing of the borders, I can tell you, as a person who has been through all of these, not as the people in Bosnia and Herzegovina, but we know something about that in then Macedonia and today North Macedonia. You cannot change the borders in the Balkans and not to have the very same day, in the afternoon, a bloodbath. As simple as that. Are there any circumstances in which you would accept border changes no. in the Western Balkans? No. We're going to see a horrible suffering of the people of the ordinary people, those who are drawing the maps on the table, they're never suffering. Common people are suffering. And we have enough of that in the Balkan history. What makes you sure that North Macedonia is prepared to enter the process of accession negotiations with the European Union? We are the best prepared candidate in the history of the organization. We have been in a preparation for, since 2005, when we became the candidate country. We have a lot of people experienced with European knowledge and they can immediately start negotiating in different clusters. I'm not saying that the European leaderships are only to be blamed for this state of affairs. I'm saying, and including myself, that the local leaderships of the Western Balkan countries have not done enough in the meantime. Clearly, on all of these uh, meetings I have with the EU officials, that was when you are absent, then this strategic void will be filled by somebody else. And uh, that is the euphemism, everybody knows whom we are speaking about, and third countries has used that, including vaccine diplomacy and misusing that, that uh, the bad situation in which all of us have been found with the unprecedented pandemia never seen in the, in the last century or so, and they started to fill that void, that empty space. So I ask for more Europe being present in the Western Balkans. I am not asking for the immediate membership. I'm asking for the right chance to start the process. What needs to change with Bulgaria in order for them to release their block from the negotiations starting for North Macedonia? They should come in terms with reality. No more, no less than that. They said that myself or other political representatives of the country should sign into the paper in the document that yes, before 1944, we have been Bulgarians, not ethnic Macedonians, and we have been speaking Bulgarian language, not Macedonian one. That is out of mind for anybody else in the contemporary Europe. Some statements on the, on the part of North Macedonia, on the part of the Skopje leadership, has been misinterpreted 
intentionally, unintentionally, by our Bulgarian friends, that allegedly we are waiting for the change of the guards in Sofia. The truth is that we are not waiting for somebody else. We are waiting for the legitimate, newly elected Bulgarian government. We are waiting for the Bulgarians themselves to identify who their interlocutor is going to be. What does the EU look like with North Macedonia as a member of it? I am not quite optimistic uh, and, and not saying that with happiness, but uh, the trends are suggesting among the population slightly different opinion stands on the European Union of today. Not because of these blockages by Bulgaria and before that by, by Greek side, uh, but because of not enough presence of Europe and not enough of the efforts, initiatives uh, of the European Union in the Balkan region. You know, I can cite one or two of the polling being done in, in my country in the, in the recent past, maybe in the past three, four months. Uh, when asked, would you prefer any other uh, Euro-Asian uh, regional organizations over the European Union? A staggering 39% of all of them said yes. Uh, when being asked, who do you think is the best friend of your country? 23% said the Russian Federation. So the people are looking to the other alternatives when you are, as the, their first choice, are not so much present. Let's talk about the vaccines. Where is North Macedonia's vaccine campaign at the moment? Chinese vaccines uh, will arrive uh, in the next two or three days, at the maximum. We have already received uh, Pfizer. We have already received uh, Sputnik through, through Serbia. We have... Uh, immunized uh, approximately 40 to 50,000 people, and that's certainly not enough. And I can understand the anger and uh, frustration of our people. I can tell you I have been personally engaged in some attempts to procure some vaccines and helping the Ministry of Health, helping the government in, in Skopje to, to, to have that as soon as possible and in large quantities, of course. And uh, we have been, I have been unsuccessful in this regard. So. I think that we cannot speak about the betrayal by the European political elites or by the European Union as such, or our Western friends. I can speak about the betrayal of the poor countries by the big pharmaceutical company. You can imagine if Germany, if France or these powerful European countries are not satisfied with the level of immunization because big pharmaceuticals have looking elsewhere but not to them, towards them. So what to say about the small and poor uh, Balkan nations which are not in a position to dictate anything to anybody. President of North Macedonia, Steve Pandorovsky, thank you so much for joining us on The Global Conversation. Thank you for having me.